It's right on. Welcome all. Please add yourself to the agenda. Uh, we're having the first value working group meeting of the year. Uh, so I thought only agenda I held so far is trying to just recap some of the interesting topics we covered over the last year, maybe do a little bit of dusting off of what we had thought through and picking up on what's important for the new year. Um, and, you know, just start with anyone want to give a, a brief catch up. Um, why don't we start with, with you, Sean, like in, in a two sentences or fewer, how are you holding up? Uh, my the lower level of my garage was completed and I moved my office into it. So now I'm in a concrete bunker, concrete and steel bunker and with a very beautiful, practical. very beautiful. <laughs> instead of garage door, I have a large sliding door and a glass door. So I have like tons of natural light uh, and what was previously a dank and dark room. But since it was totally destroyed and restored, it's pretty good now. Good. Yeah, and I can't hear the children screaming, so <laughs> it's it's, it's That's wonderful. Yeah. And and Vinod, how are you holding in Omaha? Yeah, I'm doing good. I went back to my country, visited there for like 21 days in COVID, in pandemic, and I was like, my "Gosh, my results should come negative so that I can fly back again." <laughs> and you from, what's your country, Vinod? Are you from Canada? Okay, or? No, okay. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Just kidding. I, I went to Karachi. It's like a second hottest spot for COVID. It's like oh no. Oh, it's wow. a city. It's like a city of 26 million people. So you yeah. can expect here at least. Yeah, that's a I'm tough spot. So glad you got you got there yeah. and back safely. <laughs> that's great. And probably saw some sunshine. Well, yeah. <laughs> good. And Elizabeth, how are you holding up? I'm doing okay. Uh, we had uh, COVID in the house actually over over the holidays. Oh, my daughter shit. had it, and she's pregnant, so it was a little touch oh, and go. But um, mm. she isolated, and we never got it. My son and I never ended up getting it. So um, really thankful for that. Yeah, um, we were of course I like we've been so careful this whole time, and I was like, ah, we almost, but it's okay. It's all good. Yeah. Um, and she's feeling much better. She's back to work. Like everybody's doing good, and so yes, it all worked out. So I'm so doing all right. Good. 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 And Stephen, welcome. Um, how, are, how are things going your way? And where are uh, you located? Uh, so I'm in, in Rochester, New York, and I'm at RIT where I have... I uh, thought I recognized you. Yeah. Got our, got our uh, academic OSPO started as of the end of August, and mm -hmm. we landed a a Sloan Foundation grant to do to, to create an internal team to support open source projects for faculty and staff. So I've got a full time staffer and five students coming on. Uh, the staffer Ooh. started January 4th. The students start when classes start in about two weeks. Um, and Matt and Georg wanted me to start attending these to start talking about what academic metrics might look like. Yeah, it's awesome. That's... And other than that, it's it's gray and cold in Rochester, uh, so we're par for the course for Rochester <laughs> winter. Yeah, I'm sure you have snow on the ground. Not much, really. Actually, um, it's not Buffalo. There is a significant yeah. difference between. I mean, you'll still see like we get 80, 90, 100 inches of snow, but at, at most of the time, any more anyway. It's like lake effect with like an inch or so of flurry that fell and our our days of you know four eight twelve etc inches of snow in one massive dump that's happening like once or twice a year now so it's um that that global warning fake news stuff you know that isn't really happening yeah it's it's kind of happening so fair enough yeah and out here in Minneapolis, I grew up east of Rochester in the Adirondacks, but um, I boomeranged this way with uh, my partner and it is snowing quite a lot and I like it. Um, and the break was faster than any of us would have liked yes. uh, on my end, but I got a good few. I didn't get any more baking in, which uh, I'll have to save that for a conversation with Matt, but I, I got some good 
cooked uh, good meals and I made some ramen from scratch, like all the pieces. And that was really fun. Like what you do with dough and stuff? Yeah, I made some noodles for the first time, which isn't isn't too challenging, just messy. Um, but the thing that I put the most attention to was making chashu, which is like the marinated pork that you put oh, on top. Okay. And then trying a few different types of broth, which can get kind of tricky too, but pretty fun. We've got like a bunch. It looks like a lab inside my fridge right now. <laughs> my, my wife is very tolerant. <laughs> well, good. Um, so that's great context on, and just good to see everybody again. Um, just wanted to see like where we, like what we went through in the last year. Like I, I jumped in pretty much the, in March, April timeline to uh, start after a conversation with Georg for the third or fourth time on, on considering a, a reframing of value and seeing if that reframing in my mind also fit the project. And we landed on these different buckets that we've been using uh, the, the chaos metrics V2. I'll just send that link in chat as a reference. It's at the top of the, the Google doc as well. But we have the organizational value, individual value, communal value, uh, and societal value at the top that we've yet to really conquer. Um, but we, we have these four clear delineations of value in, in which we can frame the question of what is valuable. Um, so with that context, I just want to know what you all want to kind of either, let's start with, are there any like essential takeaways, like things you're really happy that we got into that were interesting that, um, and whether we need to keep going down that path or pivot from it? Is there anything that comes to mind from last year? I will say I'm, I'm glad that we ended up pulling out uh, societal value and, and giving it its own space. And I'm, I'll be excited to delve more into those because those are hard, you know, that's like, those are challenging things to talk about and to figure out. And so I'm looking forward to that a lot for 2021. I love that. Um, it, it really is challenging because it, it gets us down to like the philosophical roots of what it means to be valuable to a society. And that's kind of, uh, I know there are a number of PhDs uh, collectively on, on this Brady Bunch call, but um, I don't know if anyone has a, a deep look at moral philosophy. <laughs> um, but at the same time, we're all implying it day to day in what we consider valuable uh, through what we measure. So it, it is applicable. No, I, I like this is the, the societal value space under the, the moniker of there's there's a moniker that's that's for a handle that's been floating around oh, for a while called H FOSS or humanitarian FOSS. Yeah, right. That, I'm, I'm that familiar with that. My my program and, and several others were built around. So and um, do you guys know the UNICEF innovation guidelines for working with doing humanitarian tech? Um, I don't know the UNICEF guidelines, although I've worked with Greg Kislop extensively, and you probably know him from the HVOS movement. So I have a general idea how HVOS is viewed, but I, I haven't looked at the UNICEF guidelines. So. Um, yeah, Greg and I, Greg, Greg and Heidi and that whole. Yeah, yeah Heidi, that, there's a, one other woman that's. Yeah, the whole, the whole teaching yeah. open source um, thing. That that group. So we we work in parallel. We don't and, and we're, you know, we're 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 good pals and, and we do good work together and stuff like that, but we we've had historically a different kind of educational focus so we don't overlap a lot um they took over this program called posse that used to be which yep. used to stand for professors open source summer experience which was a 
boot camp for CS and related profs to learn how to do open source. And that originally came out of and was funded by Red Hat. And yeah. when it was a Red Hat thing, I hosted it at RIT for a couple of years and then Red Hat stopped funding it and Greg and Heidi had rebooted it into a, a more online experience with a shorter in-person experience. And they've got been very successful at getting a couple of large NSF grants to keep it afloat, but their focus has always been primarily, um, yes, departments or related departments, and they have a, a teaching value, which is totally valid, um, of getting kids productively lost in a big code base, right, is, mm -hmm. and, you know, getting the, and they, they have a handful of projects they work with pretty regularly in their courses, like Ushahidi and, and folks like that. Um, but I'm really more of a multidisciplinary approach coming out of a games program, where in games you have you know, designers and writers and this and that and the other thing. And so their, their throw kids who are already well trained in programming into a large code base doesn't work for my population at all. And so that's why we built our open source minor um, to have these, to be much more open to folks from a lot of different backgrounds and the the program that I've been running called uh, LibreCore, which is started as hire a kid for a humanitarian project to do tech for you, evolve into a essentially a, a, an open source community consulting group. And we did a contract for UNICEF on that. And then we got this grant from the Sloan Foundation. So we are that idea of a team helping you do community around your project or or more to the point for the ford foundation research that that we did you know we all we all know being in chaos right that there's the product and then there's all the other stuff right and that sure that so many open source projects and especially in academia because they don't have the resources only focus on the product and then they don't go anywhere because they can't build a community around it. So we're like an in-house community consulting firm so that we can work with RIT professor and staff projects, whether they own them or whether they are active contributors to something bigger than themselves and do the community building and support and documentation, et cetera, piece around the project because they didn't have the cycles or the funding to do it. This is going to be really helpful context when we get to, you know, what does it mean to be valuable in the context of what you're providing? If you're able to get grants, then you're able to provide value is like the the premise conclusion I'm I'm trying to pull the strings on. So that's really good. We should we should cue that up because I, I wrote RIT OSPO down for discussion started last year that we should consider continuing and you know, framing out like what the objective is there, like whether it, or whether there are discrete metrics already uh, kind of floating around that we need to capture, or whether there are further discussions to facilitate in this space so that we can find those metrics. So um, yeah, the whole yeah. idea of an academic OSPO is pretty new. Georg yep. is going to those OSPO plus plus meetings and just kind of, if you can let me share something just for a second, since we seem to be on this, do I have share screen power? Can someone give it to me? Um, I might be able to do that. Um, let's find out. I just did. I am. Oh, great. <clears throat> so if I can. All right, so you should be seeing a kind of gritty table that might need to be expanded. There you're good. I can see it. Do that. Mm -hmm. So just really briefly, we can we can go into it in depth at another time. But acad academic careers are structured around education, research, and service. If you're a professor, those are the three legs of the tool around which you get tenure and promotion. Is the balance in your success in education, research, and service. 
So we've had the blue stuff is stuff we've had for a long time, and that's the undergraduate educational piece. The green stuff is the stuff that the OSPO is supposed to be helping with. And then the brown stuff is what Sloan funded us to do. And on that web page in the chat, there's an in paragraph link to, to the word charter. And you can click on that and see all of the stuff that I'm supposed to get accomplished in two years. God help me. Um, uh, <clears throat> yeah. But that's, I mean, you know, I don't want to occupy at least this meeting talking about that stuff. I'm certainly happy to go into depth. Sure. And yeah, well, I think, I think so, so open source program offices are a value proposition for universities in particular. So I think that it makes sense that this is, is and I guess just my question is, are these value metrics that we, we want to start thinking about academically? Or, or is how, do, how what is what do you think is the best way for chaos to to work with chaos to help advance your your areas that so, you're sharing you know if mm -hmm. so this argument works at least on the computing side of the university there's there's the science side and the other sides it, my one of the things that I have put in my charter and I want to see us to be able to do us being academia is is to be able to leverage the work that's done in the open and the metrics that we generate in the open um, better within academic tenure and promotion academic tenure and promotion no matter what department you're in, whether you're a liberal arts or, or anything else. The whole idea in that research leg of the stool where you're supposed to prove that you are of value to the institution is where do you, know, you in, in the, the scientific method and in scientific careers, we, and by we, you it should know that I only have a master's degree and it's in media studies. I'm totally, you know, credentialed, to totally way above the Peter Principle pull on my credentials being a, a full professor in a college of computing, right? But the, the whole logic behind tenure and promotion and, and that whole cycle is, is you've done your scientific experiment, you've gone out and gotten it validated, it's been replicated and people, and you've published your stuff on your experiment and other people are publishing based on your work, right? So essentially they're contributing or forking your scientific experiment, right? And that whole daisy chain takes years. And, you know, to get into the right journals or to present into the right conferences is the whole camel through the eye of a needle problem. So you've got this long timeline, you've got this very narrow funnel, and very little of it has to do with the work you actually did, right? Whereas yeah. in open source, we want the metrics, we know how many people have done what with our stuff right away. You know, so so you're using a very different open source than I am then. Well, well, I'm, I'm talking about you. <laughs> yeah, right. You know where people are using your software, you only know once you, you know, Send a bug in the latest release, right? And kill that on Twitter. Granted. But but the piece you know, part of, part of its impact and part of its translation, and sure. impact is how many people have you know how many people have downloaded, how many people have have given you a bug report, how many people have contributed, how many people have forked. Right? You can you can show evidence of what's happening in your project much more directly and easily. Mm -hmm. than you can by these three layers of abstraction to 38 professors quoted my journal article and their journal articles, right? That's what we're judging the performance of faculty on is to how many people used your work as a footnote to their work. And that's, that's a long tail. 
Absolutely. Yeah. And, and we're, we're here for that discussion for sure. The um, extension of value. Yeah. Go for it, Kevin. Sorry. I, I, uh, I had to step away for a moment uh, towards the start of that conversation. Uh, but I, I, I liked a lot of what I was hearing and what, uh, what I was kind of hearing is that maybe we should add another uh, focus area to our, uh, to our work, maybe academic value and work on uh, metric value metrics in that area. I, I think that's why Georg and Matt suggested that I come to the party. And, and it's, it's this, this kind of discussion is relatively new, right? Um, Johns Hopkins soft launched their OSPO 18 months ago, somewhere between 18 months ago and two years ago. And, and they're not, there's not a lot out there publicly in terms of what they're doing with it and what's going on with it. There's me, and then there's a lot of other, at least in the U S it's harder to figure out what's going on in South America. Um, and there are a lot of other universities that are starting to talk about it who have declared the intent to open one, but it's, it's a very, uh, it, it, it takes time, right? So OSPO plus plus is talking about this. There's a sustained academic working group that's talking about this. Um, the conversations are starting to happen. So it's probably time to start thinking about it here as well. What does that mean? I think it means some of the stuff that, that chaos does or could do some of the stuff that Linux foundation is doing with their thing that they've got investigate, inspire, whatever I looked at it today. And they're about to do a larger version of whatever they already have. Do you guys know what I'm talking about or should I? Oh, uh, you should share. Yeah. To make All right, sure so let me give, me, give me a second to, to find it because. <sighs> uh, while, while you were doing that, I was adding the uh, academic value to our uh, spreadsheet at the bottom, okay. if that's okay with everyone. Insights, yes. that's what they call it. Oh. Yeah, and Kevin, could you maybe informally or at least, or maybe formally since I'm asking you, be, be on point for doing an initial scoping of that or at least shepherding that sort of focus area through? So I'm gonna try to share again here. Sure. We want to uh, probably wanna create an issue to discuss it. Yes. Uh, okay. And so this is the Linux Foundation's Insights dashboard. Primarily for LF projects. Look, there's there's you guys. Let's let's take a look. And I can put that link in the chat. Maybe obvious to others, but I'm not sure what what software is behind this. Um. Yeah, you know, you might ask Matt. They they told me that they have talked to you guys, but that this is their own thing. Sure. Um, and they are doing some upgrade of this. Let me see. There's the to-do group chat. And where's the direct message from Tim Fong? Yeah, so that's no problem. Is, that was more just a personal curiosity. Um, I this is, this could is, be in touch with somebody in chaos. I'd, yeah, according to them, this is a non-chaos basis yeah. this is so this so they're gonna they're gonna be adding more stuff to this my understanding was they they built this themselves and they're uh they're loosely using uh chaos metrics right right so they're planning to add a bunch of things like i'm sorry i keep clicking on the wrong link and i don't need to share that there's a list in this post where they asked me to 
Well, that's good. Um, maybe we can uh, pause pause on diving too much further into that and think holistically about the sure. value group. Yeah. The overlap is that some of the things they're trying to put value towards is is beyond what we already see there. They're creating engagement dashboards and summary pages and their engagement reports are including um, code commits, mailing lists, meeting attendance, email groups, training and event participation. Yeah. Right. And they're going to, and so some of those things would be things that um, academics, you know, might, might boost the academic thing because part of, you know, it's, it's how many journals have you published in and how many presentations have you made? Um, in science, there's now this, this thing about digital preprints and <clears throat> excuse me. And have you guys looked at the center for open science at all? So um, we've heard of it, but I'm not, They've got a really interesting platform that they've built to try to help support this kind of stuff as well. They're probably, oh, why did projects show up again? That's not right. Um, sorry about that. I'll have to type it out. So looking at their, their platform, and what they do is kind of interesting. Um, there's 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 a whole idea in science of preprints, which are stuff that you've published and circulated on your your experiments before you've been officially published and certified as being real in a journal and through replication, but you're starting to get the world out there, right? So there's some idea of, you know, how much attention are your preprints getting versus your final published articles, and they, they carry less weight. So I, I mean, the, the long and short of it is, is that academia is about 100 years old and behind the times in terms of how you can measure someone's value. And yes, so there, there we have are, those discussions routinely. Yeah. So, yeah. so building, being able to have things, these, these kind of dashboard systems or reporting systems that easily surface how much impact and translation your work has would help. Does that make sense? I, I'm getting the theme that there is a healthy overlap in the objectives that you have for for quantifying academic value in the modern era uh, and you have a lot of great references here that we can parse through and look for the appropriate ways to quantify those and add them to the catalog so that's perfect and, and i'm still i'm still in the learning stage for some of this stuff um open science and open data use you know, from my limited observations, anything that's open, right, is built off of open source, right? So there are similarities, but there are differences. And I'm trying to, to learn so I can better serve the people at my university, how the open science and open data stuff works so that I can figure out where can I pull the value points out of to be able to use, to convince, it's not even, unfortunately, my university because it's each college that really holds the power over. Here's what we consider important for promotion and tenure. But I'm, I'm trying to get to the place where I can start making um, arguments based on deeper understanding and some actual evidence versus just knowing in my gut that we're doing it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's okay. An, I did admirable. create an issue to capture some of this discussion. Thank you. That's really helpful. Uh, and then I 
I just added the uh, I added the area to our spreadsheet, uh, mm -hmm. but perhaps we could have the discussion about what initial metrics might fit in there in the issue rather than in the uh, in the spreadsheet. Yeah, that's a great idea. Um, maybe we can. Why not? Uh, why don't we we add the link under there just so if someone comes along, point them that direction as well. And and it's oh, into the spreadsheet. Yeah, just to link the dots there or connect the dots. Yep. You what know, at some it? point when this group feels better about the very first rough, rough draft, like mm -hmm. getting getting input from the folks in the sustained working group and the, the OSPO plus plus group. Um, Richard Litauer is, is pretty active in both of those. And so, you know, and, and starting to, to do the podcasts and stuff, you know, I, I did a chaos cast with Georg already talking a little bit about what we're doing at RIT, Good. but getting, getting your interest in, in academic value to those groups and up on the sustain impactful open source podcast to try to get more voices into the pool and, and that kind of thing also makes sense. One of the, I think one of the things that's going to be difficult with the academic value metrics is that the uh, perspective is going to be, is going to be different. Uh, you know, in our other value metrics, we've kind of got it separated out to organizational value, uh, the contributor value. When we get down to academic value, all of those things are going to be kind of probably dropped into that same focus area, right? So the researchers who create the software need to have value metrics. Institutions need to have value metrics. So the perspective of those value metrics is going to be a little bit different. So I think when we're doing this, we need to be careful about who we're describing value for. And and part of the part of the academic metric, there is an organizational value in terms of your your service as a faculty member, either to the institution or to the profession, right? So there's that as well. What I'm assessing is the same metric can be used in different value areas, like the same metric can be used in an organizational value, or same metric can be used. It's just the context will be changed, but the metric can be used in the multiple focus areas. I think that's probably right. Um, one of the real challenges is where do you pull this stuff from, right? But I, I do think they're, well, well, organizational value could be the same as academic institution value for, for some things. Mm -hmm. I do think that we need an academic value focus area uh, because not all of those organizational value metrics are going to be, are going to match one-to-one -one with institutional value for, for, uh, uh, yeah. I mean, the going back to the, I, if I didn't say it before, because I can't remember, I mean, the, the Linux Foundation insights thing, right? Mm -hmm. Their their meetings value and their trainings or certifications um, elements of their dashboards, you know, initially that's going to come from their stuff, right? It's going to be the certifications they give and the trainings they own and the, the meetings they run because they already have that. So they're, they're going to hope that people will hop on and share APIs to wherever they have their registration databases or whatever, so that they can get more data from other people, whether they will or not, or whether their tool remains to be kind of only viable based on what happens within their neighborhood, as it were, it's way early to tell. Gotcha. Hey, so, um, the note, you, yeah. Go oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, happy. Okay. I was just, I was just wondering if we could jump back to the the beginning of the conversation. I think the we we started this by talking about what we wanted to work on moving forward. Exactly. 
I do have a I do have an answer to that question, and uh, academic value is something that I would like to work on moving forward. Uh, but in regards to what uh, the working group has been done doing prior, I would actually I would like to see more focus on the organizational value uh, focus area. I think that's the I think that's the hardest focus area we have. Uh, the the other the other ones I, I think they're a little easier to do. Organizational value is the is the big question that uh, that no one seems to be able to answer. Uh, and in the interviews that I've done with community managers and product managers about open source, this is these are the metrics that they are really really requesting because they they need to be able to justify their existence. Uh, so. I, so I would, it would be nice if we could focus a little bit more on organizational value, uh, even though I do realize that the, that's the, this is the, the wicked problem here, right? The, the really complex one. Yeah. Uh, I, would, I right. would suggest that if we get some organizational representation in any form here, they'll be more helpful and insightful. Hi, I've got 15 years of open source community management work <laughs> uh, across a, major I'm, institutions and startups. <laughs> and I'm not speaking for you when I say this, but the, yeah. the individuals I've talked to don't necessarily have this answer. Yeah. So I, this is something we need to talk through and we need to maybe be imaginative and creative and, and kind of yeah, and figure I, it out. Right? So something, one of the recaps I was looking over is what I found challenging in 2020 is that a lot of the met like the metrics that end up getting huge quantities of funding, uh, whether I was at a corporation that makes micro or like yeah, makes CPUs that are well known, or I was at a startup pitching a VC, they're not necessarily uh, statistically significant or even validly framed. They're they're narratives. Yeah. And uh, you wrap up the narrative in whatever somebody wants to hear, whatever kind of belief si system they're currently holding. Uh, so it's it's there there isn't a one correct way to quantify the success. And and I struggle with like how do we balance both like getting to statistical significance and rigor uh, as a and get mark those down as like, this is what we recommend doing to see real trends versus how do you get paid? <laughs> those don't often align, unfortunately. I haven't yet found them to cons consistently align in my career um, or to, I talk to people doing similar work every day. Uh, so I, I don't know exactly how we fit that in, but I think a, a canonical example is project popularity, which is a metric we I, I laid out a first draft, we broke it into a few different pieces and the decomposition, it, it looks more rigorous, but it's also not going to be applied in my opinion, um, based on the experience there, because people just have a bias of like what it means to be popular. They're gonna pattern match against that and then you know, throw $5 million at a project that seems popular. Um, and I, I don't know, I don't quite know how to merge those worlds. Um, I don't have any answers either. I just like, I'm just staring at that problem. Like I'd love to figure out how to pick that apart. Well, you, you can't be popular unless you're visible and you can't be visible without the work of the people who make you visible. And, you know, it, it goes back to the, it's easy to do the metrics on the code and Therefore, people invest all their time in the code, and they don't. But this is like a social graph, yeah, more than a, a like a, a Git graph. Yeah. You know, we, we um, the Ford Foundation work we did was to to look at a. The question was, you know, do maintainers and users have the same concept of what it means to be a sustainable project, and. Sure. And, and how does I'm that, not sure I have that clear. Right, right. And so, <laughs> so how does that help and hurt a project? And, and we looked at uh, PyPI, which took multiple years to, to finally refactor to, ref, what is it, refinery or something like that is, is the new flavor of it. 
um, it took them years to be able to refactor their project. And, and a lot of the cognitive split between the group was what was important that, that within the culture of the community, the project leads felt that devoting resources to things like docs and recruiting and, and community outreach and all that other stuff were a drag installing the project, right? That there was so much of a focus on code development that they couldn't get anything done. And then the, even the people who had been brought on specifically to do things like community management um, got to the point where they felt they were dragging the project down by not focusing on the code, right? So Agreed. it's easy to do that in a narrative. How do you get to the stats and figure yeah. out how to put the value there? Good. Oh, hey, and I'd be remiss where we stop at 50. Uh, so I, I, I want, I'd be remiss not to bring up that Sean, you did a, you know, incredible uh, task of decomposing the SCMS metric system into what we were, you know, colloquially calling atomic, it's atomic elements. And I, I know you got a, a lot of headway on there. And I just want to check in on like, where do you feel we are in that space and what can the rest of us do to help kind of bring that over uh, into, into our existing system? Bring what over exactly? Uh, the atomic metrics that From you the, out of SCMS. Yeah, I mean, I think we can develop the metrics. Uh, to this point, I, I think it's been you and I who have had an interest in that, but I'm yeah. not, I haven't seen broader interest. Um, and I'm, I'm, I've been a little confused about what's happening with SCMS, honestly. Like, sure, that's there's, been, there's been some very weird conversations about intellectual property and naming. And I think we, did we change the name of what we were calling it now? Yeah, we changed it to social listening. Yeah, so, so yeah, I mean, if, if there's, yeah, I think if there's support within this group to start working on those metrics, we could use some of these meetings to just do what we do with other working groups and start chugging through those. I think the question is if, if, the, and if those are priority that's, that, that are aligned with, you know, Stephen's interests, your interests. Uh, certainly I did do a lot of work on them, so I'd be happy to push them forward. I, I just, I felt like I, I felt like it was a bit of an ambiguous situation. And so I wasn't, I wasn't like diving in to do it because I wasn't sure if there was larger support for doing it, you know? Sure. Yeah, I, I would say, yeah, there is support overall, but we, we definitely had some um, some concerning hurdles because there's just unknowns and the possibility of intellectual property being involved. So we all hit the brakes. Um, all the more reason to bring it back to the surface and say, I think we're over the hump of that. And if there's meaningful metrics to pull from it, we we can start to consider those because going full circle to, to Kevin's point on organizational value, like we need the building blocks to have a discussion around organizational value. And I think a lot of what social listening needs in order to do that is the stuff that, you know, I've always got paid to produce. And it's, you know, yeah. the number of people tweeting about something or like the number of blog posts about a project or readership, yeah. et cetera. Like all these kind of top level vanity metrics that in aggregate have value. And, yeah. and that stuff, there, there's been stuff that's been addressed in that within the academic space as well. It's kind of unclear as to how much attention people are really paying to it. Mm -hmm. There was this big push around alt metrics um, mm -hmm. a while ago. And and there are a couple of, of proprietary paid services that kind of track that stuff, but it's, oh, I'll try to remember where they are but but a google search on like academic alt metrics should start to bring stuff up great yeah and, and that will come perfectly into the context of this academic focus area which makes perfect sense and uh the nod like your your point i don't want to lose either on the same metric falling into mo multiple focus areas um, i'm not familiar enough with other working groups to know if that is 
normal or if there is like a tagging strategy that we can implement from peers. But I see Kevin nodding, so. It's normal, it's, it's just, we just try to put it where you think it best belongs and, and yeah. uh, and yeah, that's where uh, like this is the main challenge I feel in the value working group than in any other group because value is highly contextual and the same thing can be viewed from a different angles by different people or different stakeholders, I would say, rather yeah. than just people. Like different stakeholders uh, perceive and value the same thing in a different way. So it's like you're looking at the elephant, but everybody's looking at a different part of the same elephant and assessing it accordingly. So. Sure. Yeah, I mean, to me, yeah, oversimplified, but what, what's a good metric and a story on top if it's not oversimplified? I like the, the story I'm telling myself is that like, there are these collections of atomic parts that are applicable in lots of different ways. Um, but if we have a mature enough, like synthetic or aggregate metric, it, it will fit firmly into one camp because the organization and the individual don't care about the same thing as vi visualized, even if it's the same parts, it, it's visualized differently. So maybe like to me that that tells me like, we don't actually know the user well enough, like, uh, and we're not giving them enough of a, uh, like an end result that they can actually use it. If, if it's generic, this is like product management 101. If it's generic enough to fit multiple personas, you have no customers. Uh, so I, I feel that we run into that here and, and maybe a metric isn't the right output here. It's like, we need playbooks almost. I think I think that's where the uh, that's where the aggregate metrics and the tooling and the dashboards and community reports come in, right? Yeah, you're absolutely right. Yeah, cool. But the, Matt, the metrics Matt, themselves do need to be kind of that. They need to be that base level building block that we can use. Yeah. What were you saying? And I, I think. Mark, Wait, hold on, Sean. Oh, go, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I was I just going to go, go, Elizabeth, go. <laughs> I was just gonna say that um, I think that 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 uh, guidebook has been brought up before, and I don't remember where, but uh, maybe it was in the community meeting. Because um, I think you're absolutely right. I think that that is what we need in order to enable people to actually put these in practice. So I just wanted to say that we should keep bringing that up, and we should okay. get a plan to like make that happen at some point. Okay. But I, but I would say I think we are we are doing that when we do those community reports and when we create the badging programs and uh, so so maybe maybe we need to think about a value report. Yeah. What would be on a what would be on a value report? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. First first job. Who pays you? Uh, <laughs> or like first question. Yeah. Who pays for your work? And then who will provide a tool? Cool. Well, this very fun kickoff. Thank you all for going down a little bit of memory lane uh, over a pretty chaotic year. I unfortunately can't say this one is uh, going to be a lot clearer, but um, I definitely look forward to continuing these conversations. Stephen, we love having you. Thank you for bringing your perspective. And uh, Kevin, I'm excited that you're excited about this academic focus area. I think that'll be really a, a healthy and helpful additional context. I, I look and, forward and are we and are we gonna do the academic folks here inside this group or are we gonna form a different group? I think I missed that. It fits pretty nicely in this group for now. I so um, and yeah, I think no, if we no want it, we to. should grab it. Yeah. <laughs> hungry, hungry hippos. Yeah. So I, I it's have, kind of the way that works, right? I think I think it is the way that works. Yeah. Stephen, what were you saying? I, I have one logistical issue in that sure. sustain academic group mm -hmm. um also meets every other Thursday in this time slot. <laughs> yeah. Thursday afternoons seem to be very popular. So um, I'm going to try to like alternate back and forth. Mm -hmm. Is that cool with everybody? Yeah, um, that makes sense. Yeah. Like, don't is, it, is it actually every other week it for them? Every other Thursday on the same Thursdays that you guys are. Perfect. Well, I mean, we <laughs> could contemplate shifting our shifting our time. I mean, it's not a, it's not unheard of. We, 
we do move uh we've moved time slots before agreed yeah this time slot is officially occupied going forward for me and something i need to uh consider as well but um so the time slot needs to be dismissed. do we want to add the time slot to the agenda for the next working group meeting yeah yeah okay and um, is there, should I be on a, a mail list or, or something? I, I don't know what I should be hopping on to other than these meetings Yeah, for this um, group. If you check out the, the README and value group, we, we use the okay. same mailing list as, as everybody else, but you can grab the information from there. All right, great. Yeah. Good. So generally know. speaking, uh, chaos meetings meet between 9 a.m. Central Time to noon central time. Uh, we're not limited to that. We can go elsewhere, but for the most part, that's where they all exist. And there are open windows within that, that time period during the week. Okay, cool. So. Makes sense. All right, thanks all. Thank you. Looking all forward right. to this. Take care. See everybody. Bye. Yeah. yeah.